Well, hi there, everybody. This is Anuel Pacheco, the multimedia specialist, and I will be going over the multimedia section of the rubric. We'll start by uh, covering question 48. Are images files optimized for efficient loading? What I mean by this is for the images to be no larger than 800 by 600 and no smaller than 640 by 480. The images should be formatted in JPEG or PNG since this allows for better display in any browser currently in use by our students. Moving on to question 49. Are audio files optimized for efficient loading? The audio files that you use in your course should be formatted in MP3. There are several reasons why you want to use MP3 as the audio format of choice for your courses. One is a compressed audio format. It's easy to load in your browser and it's also easy to upload to eCollege as one of the files that need to be uploaded to your course. For the next several questions I will be uh, showing examples from eCollege and the different aspects of uh, certain things that I'm looking for in your courses. Are the content pages easy to read with plenty of white space, short pages? As you can see in this lesson, the professor left plenty of white space around the multimedia images that he's using to demonstrate course concepts for this lesson. Another example of the introduction of multimedia into your course is an introduction audio or video element to the course home itself or to one of the main units of the course home. This could easily be done by using Voki, uh, shooting a video of yourself, or recording a short audio introduction that you can insert into your course. It is also important for you to let your students know what plugins or add-ins they will need in order to watch the multimedia embedded into your course. In this example, the professor basically just put uh, course helpful links into his course home as a way to let the students know that they will be uh, needing all these uh, plugins or add-ins for their browsers in order to watch videos or to listen to audio embedded into this course. It is also important that you test any links that you have embedded into your course to make sure that they don't lead the students to pop-ups or any other course distractions. It's also important as well that um, you um, make sure that all the interactive content in your course is optimized for efficient loading. What I mean by this is if you embedded a video and the video takes several minutes to load, that's not going to be efficient or appropriate because the student is not going to be able to watch the content. The other thing that I would like to suggest is for you guys to start using the screencast service because a lot of the courses has um, videos that are embedded from YouTube or links to other websites on the internet. The problem with this is that as the course evolves and time goes on, some of these videos can be taken down or removed from a service like YouTube and then you don't have the video and you got to go out and look for new content. By using the screencast service, we will house the video, we will host it for you and you can guarantee that the link will be always available to your students. Hopefully this video will help you understand the use of multimedia in your courses and as always if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact the distance learning team for all of your multimedia needs. Have a great day.